is started. Is that working? It's I think working. so. I see let's, just, let's just assume it's working. Let's, pre- let's talk to let's ourselves. Pretend. Imagine let's the pretend internet it's working. <laughs> Yeah, it's just it's just us. It's just it's just you and Act me, natural. Scott, right now. Act natural. Act, uh, hey, right. everyone. <laughs> no, th- we didn't click the 18 plus thing first. What? So I can't. <laughs> hey, everybody. My name is Fraser Kane. I am the publisher of Universe Today, and this is your virtual star party for wow, what is it? The 12th, January. January 12th, 2014. You know, after last week's virtual star party, our it's epic virtual star party of awesomeness, uh, it's going to be really hard to kind of catch up, but uh, we'll, we'll do our best. Uh, actually, it's going to be a it's going to be a the planet show, the planetary planet. show today. Actually, we have none of our deep sky telescopes happening, but what we do have is uh, a bunch of planets in the moon. So, all right. So joining yeah, we got weathered today, out today, yeah, uh, we got uh, we got Dave Dickinson. Hey, David. Hey, hey. Set up here in Florida with my propane heater running. Oh, really? It's not going to interfere with your... Uh... No, I have it way away from the scope, so it's not under. It's not yeah. going to melt any cords or wires. I'm or getting like a don't background blow up sound. We don't need Are you getting me? that too, Scott? Like a background Blue. hiss? I wonder where that's coming from. I, I, hear, I do hear it a little bit. Yeah. How, how, how cold does it have to be in Florida before you whip out the propane heater? Uh, <laughs> It seems, it seems, I think it's in the high 40s here at Fahrenheit right now, so that's what, in the single digits Celsius? How do you guys live? Yeah. <laughs> well, so not too far from, from where I am here. So that's yeah. that's Mike Phillips hey. in North Carolina. Hey, Mike. Yeah. That's, that's Jupiter with Mike Phillips. And that's Jupiter. Jupiter. Yeah, I'm, I'm actually outside tonight. figured I'd brave these cold temperatures, but I, I'm not cool enough to have a space heater, so i got my winter coat on. <laughs> I think it's you, Mike. I hate to it's say me. this, but I think... Uh-oh. I think this audio is you. It you sounds like contact a network professional, Mike. Yeah, I know, yeah. I know, I know. Someone who works for some network I provider. I always MacGyver something together here. But we, it sounds like I hear your voice, but I also hear a hundred whispers at the same time. That's, that's the quiet sticks <laughs> yeah. of North Carolina. Maybe, forest. yeah. <laughs> it's that's, the woodland that's fairies. What's, that's what silence. <laughs> Actually, sounds like yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. It's like it's like the it's like the background uh, Big Bang radiation. Right? Now I'm I, I'm not gonna rule out that it is the voices in my head. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we don't hear anything. Yeah, I know. Wait a minute. No, I hear it too. Yeah. Okay, all right, good. Um, and we've got uh, Shaw from Malaysia. Hey, Shaw. Hey, it's great. My second time ever on VSB. I know, I know, and uh, because you always have the terrible weather, but you've had a, a real run, and and yeah. uh, we're going to talk about you in a second, but I'm just going to sort of, of course, Scott Lewis, co-host. Hey, hey Scott. How's it going, Fraser? Uh, so I'm going to start with Shaw. So Shaw, you, you know, we've been making a big fuss of the work that you've been doing for the last week, and you kind of tuned us in last week on the yeah. Star Party, because what you did was you... Uh, you were showing us this live video that you had captured of of Venus. Just, yes, yeah. Yeah, so just as it was nearing its inferior conjunction. Of course, the last time that we saw Venus during its inferior conjunction was the, was the uh, we did a live broadcast of the, uh, the transit of Venus in front of the sun. So yes. this time around, Venus is not passing in front of the sun. It's passing like a little, what, above, below? About five, de- five, five about, degrees, yeah. about five degrees above, almost as far as it can. Seven degrees is about the max because its orbit's tilted about three degrees in relation relation to our own. Yeah, and of course it only does this once or twice every hundred and eight years, so we're not going to see this again in our in our lifetimes. But uh, but what? But we saw Venus. So Shaw was showing us, and Venus at that point was still a couple of percent illuminated, a week before, a week and a bit before. Uh, conjunction, I guess a week before conjunction. Well, he's been capturing these terrific photographs day after day after day with Venus just getting more and more of just this slender crescent and and you've still got live coverage of Venus uh, now, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, the weather was, wasn't was great yesterday, the day after the conjunction and me and, and uh, Paul had a day rest yesterday, so it was like, wow. Sunday is re- it's relaxed. <laughs> wait, wait so, we didn't t- authorize a day of rest. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <oops. laughs> but, but, yeah. but, but this morning, is, the sky clears up quite nice, and uh, I should be able to show you guys the Venus again. I think it's about um, slightly, almost one degree in uh, illuminated today, I think so. Slightly more than five degrees it's, from it's, the sun. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, 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 was just, I was just able to see it this morning with binoculars. Is a, yeah. 
I, I was curious what kind of safety precautions you take to look at Venus that close to the sun. Uh, well, um, because I'm I'm using the uh, computerized telescope, the go-to telescope. I don't dare use a manual telescope. So yeah. what I did is I, I, I slew to the sun, I synchronized the software, I used the CDC software, I synced to the sun, and then I slew to Venus. Only then I opened up the, the, uh, the solar filter and put up the extended uh, ah, okay. cap, you cap on. Okay. Yeah, it's pretty much quite quite easy because Venus is really close to the sun. It's about what five, six degrees. Yeah, so it yeah. doesn't it doesn't really divert that much from 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 the position of the sun. So I watch everything on this computer screen. Uh, I'm not at the telescope. It's like blazing hot, forty degrees <laughs> <laughs> on the roof. I, yeah. yeah. I didn't so know I'm if you're phys share, physically. I'm your picture here. I'm gonna share Charles' picture from yesterday, or uh, for two days ago. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you if you can see this. Uh, look at that. Yeah. It's so it's so just slender and. Yeah, this was I think about eight hours before the conjunction, oh, and okay. yeah. Yeah, and you're but, only seeing it about what about 0.4 percent illuminated, not even one yeah, percent, yeah. not even uh, half a percent. I noticed that there's a slight, uh, slight um, tinted on on the lower left of this Venus or the crescent. Is is that the the sun reflected reflecting on the atmosphere or something? I don't know. It, it might be just a little bit of glaring on it. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Uh, Venus is just over an arc minute wide, and it's the only planet that can appear over an arc minute wide from Earth. So right, right when it's at inferior conjunction, it's at its closest approach to us as well. So we actually see it just slightly larger than one arc minute. Think of the full moon is about thirty arc minutes across. So you could stack yeah. about thirty Venuses across the full moon. It's pretty and amazing that you can get such small illumination, but yet still see it in the daytime. I mean, that's yeah. just yeah. Amazing. I mean, I think people need to be clear about this, right? The shot <laughs> is getting this image in broad daylight. Yeah, what like, time is it over there? It, it yeah. was about it's about noon, I think. Yeah, around noon, around that time. Yeah. Because the, the the window of clear sky <clears throat> that I have over here is about two hours around noon. So after that, it's going to be a thunderstorm. It's going to be uh, it's cloudy. So the, at that particular moment, the sky clears up and. It's like I, it's a miracle, actually. <laughs> I, I just I just managed. We were talking before the show. I just managed this morning to pick out Venus just prior to sunrise with binoculars. So it is it is already visible in the early morning sky. Of course, you only want to try to do it before the sun gets above the horizon. I wouldn't sure. be sweeping with binoculars with with the sun above the horizon. I want to steal right, the so show. Go to the, so oh, this is the live one, right? Yeah, this is a live one at the moment. So Venus totally now. Dead. Yeah. That's great. And so now things are flipped around, but but from your perspective, I guess Venus is passing, has passed above the sun and is now moving into, I guess, what will become the morning sky. Right? Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. already visible in the morning sky now. It's going to become more prominent in the next few days. You'll probably pick it up easily with the naked eye here in a few days. So I don't want to yeah, steal yeah. too much of, of the the Venus thunder here, but um, the moon yeah, Io, very similar to the video <laughs> I posted, is, is going to do the exact same thing it did the other night. Yes, that's awesome. That's so, a reverse of notice, last... Yeah, we, well, it's, I think my camera's reversed. Are we going to see Io go in front of Jupiter? No, it's no I think behind. it's I think it's going behind, but yeah. I mean, if you, if you sit and watch it in the next you know two or three minutes, it's going to disappear behind. It's already uh, almost imperceptibly. We're, I, we're about but, to lose it. Yeah. But yeah. Mike's actually lying. This is a still shot. It's going to be bouncing around. <laughs> He's just jiggling it around <laughs> in front of yeah. the camera. Just yeah, just shake it like a Polaroid picture. Right? That's right. <laughs> right. So so that's right. So then over on the left side there, yes. of limb right here, of that's Jupiter there. My mouse right yeah, there. that's Io. Yeah. Yeah, and it, and it pretty soon is the. I mean, there's no black space in between the the planet and the moon right now yeah. even anymore. I, I noticed pretty earlier. Soon it's just gonna disappear. I noticed earlier tonight we were gonna lose it during the show. Yeah, it was kind of. Yeah, I thought that was kind of cool. Wow. Yeah, and so I'm, I'm at low magnification from when I was to, to make that video, just because it's not very great seeing right now. So. Yeah, you look really turbulent there too. Yeah. yeah. So we have a, a, a submission from Stuart. <laughs> He's not able to make it today, but he did send me a, a, his best astrophotography he could do right now. And this is Stuart's moon from his iPhone. So. <laughs> <laughs> Good job, Stuart. Nice. Go, Stu. I, he wanted to make sure that he gets credit for it, and I'm not kidding. <laughs> <laughs> so. I've seen some people do some pretty awesome iPhone photography, though. Uh, Mike Wiesner yeah. out in Arizona. Uh, just aiming his iPhone up to his telescope, he's got some pretty awesome images. Well, and now you have those those adapters you can put onto the iPhone itself. I think that's what he has. Yeah, uh, those things uh, are awesome. Yeah, 
Um, okay, so so I just want to remind you as well that we're happy to take questions, comments, and and feedback from the audience. We're not going to be able to take requests tonight because if your if your requests aren't the moon, the sun, Jupiter, or <laughs> Venus, we are not going to be able to help you out today. I I do have a messier object. Uh, that that crater in the middle is actually a crater messier. <laughs> right. <there. laughs> not, not of the same catalog. But but, uh, but so we're using the Q and A app. So if you go onto YouTube, there's the you should say that we're answering questions live, and we're glad to answer any questions that you might have about space and astronomy, mm-hmm. about uh, observing astrophotography, anything about like that telescope. Yeah. You may ask us what telescope should you start with, and we would be glad to answer that question for you. So I think, or I think I was head on over to our going. channel that uh, Tony and I actually just did a hangout on that. On what telescope should you buy first? And the answer is all of them and none of them. All of them <laughs> and none. Of them. <laughs> it depends on what you want to do. Yeah, yeah. It's a very you know, like that's the, like you're gonna have to buy us a couple of beer, and we're gonna sit down and we're gonna hammer that out for a couple of hours. Yep. Yeah. And you know, I was, I was about mobile. half gone. If you can still spot it here along yeah, the edge, you can. It's That's a yeah. little jumbly, but it's kind of fun. I was I was amazed. This is, great. This is a first. You know what? I'm I'm gonna call it. This is the first time we've seen really? a moon get this occulted by the by the planet. That's pretty cool. That's that cool. Is cool. Yeah, uh, we're gonna watch it. I'm I'm still waiting for a moon to go in front of Jupiter. I've still yet to see I, that in. In one I, of the star parties. I, I checked beforehand, yeah, to see if we get any shadow transits. We're still out of sync with the great uh, red spot that comes out two in the morning or something like that. So, oh, so, Fraser, uh, I'm getting a ping from James McGee. Send him an invite. He's able to bring the moon in as well. Oh, great! More moon. Well, yeah, they have something to do when the moon is out, right? The, no deep sky. The, go for the moon. The, those two craters, Messier and Messier A, in the center, you can see the rays coming off. That's a very oblique <clears> impact <throat> crater. That's uh, one of the things that's notable about that is, uh, unlike a lot of the impact craters, you can see the rays, how that actually was a very shallow uh, angle on, right. the on that. So just something neat. That is really neat. You can definitely see it ray out. We, we, me and somebody else were discussing this feature earlier tonight, so I was like, I, I took a look around. I was like, you know what? You can see it tonight. Okay, I'm going to move to the, I'm gonna move to the moon. So goodbye, Io. There. So did you all people <laughs> see you on the other side? Did everybody <laughs> see that? Io is gone. Io yes. just... Later. Passed behind Jupiter. That it, is a first. That's epic. In It'll in be... the in the short subs that I was doing to make that that video, I was doing ninety seconds, and in ninety seconds it was smearing because it would move so fast. So yes. in the short, you know, five minutes that we started talking about it, it it's moved from uh, visible I, to gone. I was the yep. innermost Galilean moon. So yeah. Okay, I'm going to the, I'm gonna move to this moon view for a little bit, and David can kind of move us around a bit. Sweep around here. See if I can find the Terminator. Where there's and it looks something. like there's a little bit of vignetting going on, so it's like you have a spotlight on the moon. <laughs> yeah, yeah, probably in the center of the field. Uh, well, some of it is the fog it, it, uh, as, it, as it gets uh, foggier on the lens. No, I like just so. thinking that you have a spacecraft there with a spotlight <laughs> just shooting around on the moon. That looks great. Oh, there you yeah, go. Stop touching it. Stop. Stop touching oh, it. What I'm, what, I'm trying, what I'm trying to find is the uh, the landing area for the Chang'e rover is illuminated again. It, it just yeah. uh, it experienced it's, its uh, second sunrise. So. Uh, it's it's right there in, in the that general area there, but I don't know the specific yeah. area. It's harder yeah. when I get this narrow field. Uh, it's it's uh, the sea the sea of rainbows, uh, Sinus Ceridium. and if I sweep or if I see it, I'll recognize it. But it's. Uh, I might have to take the contrast up here a little What's bit. What's that crater there? Oh, I'd have to look it up. Oh, okay. That was one of the it's hard ones. it's hard when you're zoomed in to try to get the uh, to get the reference of where we actually are. So Shaw, if we uh, take one last look at your Venus, could we then move to the sun? All right. Oh, hold on. Well you move. can move to the sun. I'm staying here on Earth. <laughs> <You're taking laughs> here. Oh uh, here's the sun. that I'm using at the moment, yeah. Oh can nice. Oh, yeah. Cool. yeah. You see the makeshift cardboard tube. Uh, I'm closing up the uh, the dew cap. Yeah, yes. So, can you see the blue sky? Such I a rare blue those, sky that yeah, it's incredible. That. <laughs> but usually oh, wow. on January and February we got very great sky over here. Um, but in November, September, it's going to be really it's a rainy season during that time. So now is the only time that I can do anything at the moment. Well, yeah, we're we glad have. to have you back. I, 
It's been yeah. a while. It's yeah. right. we're, we're just going to use you and abuse you until you can't do it anymore. <laughs> until the rain comes back <laughs> and, gives you a, and lets you take a break. Uh, yeah. Here's that. Here's Venus Day. Oh, great. Oh, very cool. All right, so everyone say goodbye to Venus because then we'll we'll move to... Uh, your we'll sun. move to the to the sun in a second. So the, I mean, the great Venus. amazing thing about Venus, right, is that you know you can see this, which is when Venus is passing in between the sun and the Earth, and it looks like this just amazing crescent moon, especially when you can see it higher in the sky and it's a little further away. And but when it's on the other side of the um, when it's on the other side of the sun, but we can still see it, it looks more like a sphere, more like what we would expect. So it's a it's a really neat sort of change in perspective. And yet when it's at its most brightest, when Venus is just the brightest thing in the sky, it's that crescent. It's 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 not what you would expect it to be because even though it's a lot less illuminated, it's very it's a lot closer and a lot brighter. It's larger, yeah, it's visually larger. Yeah. Some say that we can see the crescent with a naked eye. Uh, I haven't really tried it. I, tried? I've, I've I've heard uh, discussions about that too. Yeah. yeah. I think yeah. I can. But I could be imagining it. But I think I've, you, you know, you, know, you, you put your hand up and you just look through like a little tiny gap in your fingers, and I think I'm seeing it. Well, you know, as much as there's anecdotal stories about people being able to see it, you think about before Galileo invented the telescope, nobody reported Venus being a crescent. So yeah, <laughs> you right. think somebody would have noticed it beforehand? And so. nobody noticed Jupiter's moons, right? Yeah, yeah, cause, <laughs> yeah. yeah there, there is there is discussion, yeah, about the same thing about whether you can see like Ganymede. I think it's the brightest one of Jupiter's moons. Whether you can see that with the naked eye. When well, it's what's its magnitude? Would it, if it was just a star, would you be able to see it? I, I believe it's about six magnitude. It's right on the edge of yeah. uh, what would be visible. But of course, it's in the glare of Jupiter too. So, all right. Well, goodbye, go. goodbye, uh, goodbye, Venus. I, I have right. the I have the Bay of Rainbows up right now. There, uh, that Great. big uh, curved bay, and somewhere in there, off to, to the bottom of the curve, is the Changi uh, rover in the lander. Uh, We're not going to see it, but it's in okay, that, it's in that region it. of the field. And I'm going to welcome James and Andrew here to the to the team. Andrew, what what time is it there? Hi, Fraser. It's uh, two twenty. Two. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good. So, did you get up early or did you stay up late? Uh, I I got up early. <laughs> <laughs> well, good morning. Good um, morning. And uh, were you going to try and use the eye telescope? Set up? No, no, I've got my own scope out in the back garden at the moment. Let me just what? find. Oh, I, have you got Saturn? No. Mars? <laughs> this would be the <laughs> planetariest of them all. And James is here. Hey, James. Just about all the planets but Mercury are visible right now. So. Hello. How are you? Of course, they're all in the morning sky except Jupiter. Oh, that looks great, James. Yeah, it does look really good. And I'm getting yeah, I'm an using, echo uh, from someone. I'm using my uh, my Canon 6D uh, with my Nexstar 6SE telescope uh, to be able to bring you this view. Where am I getting this echo from? I think it's Scott's gonna... on the hunt. Okay. All right, you keep hunting, Scott. I will. I think it's Shaw. <gasps> Sorry. We just got some echo happening. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think that was him. Dun 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 dun. Echo discovered. Uh, yeah, there's getting like a background noise, Shaw. So sorry, just stay muted, and then if you need to talk, then unmute yourself. Um, look at that moon. That's that's terrific. And then look at the Jupiter that Michael's. This is crazy. This is a total planet fest. This is amazing. <laughs> Not to be confused with the actual Planet Fest by the Planetary Society. Yeah, that happens later we're, this year. We're, yeah. we're gonna, we were talking before the show. We're going to be able to bring Mars probably by late February or so. Or, or, or right or now, if that's what Yeah, if you can bring it tonight, yeah. Because Mars yeah. reaches uh, opposition April 8th, I think it is. But it's going to be going to be fairly decent opposition. So it's it's getting better toward 2018. So, 20, David, you're, you're saying opposition, and for our viewers here, what does that mean? It, it, it will rise opposite to the sun. It will be at its closest approach. It will be just about at its closest approach to Earth right around that date. And it's going to rise in the east when the sun sets in the west. It's very much like a full moon, right? So yeah. the sun, yeah. the Earth, and the but, planet are in a line. But, but the Mars won't be as 
big as the full moon. It never no, 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 big no. as the full moon. <laughs> <laughs> no. Right. <Yeah>. An- angular <laughs> wise. Right. What? Mars is going to be as big as the full moon? No, oh, that I, only happens I, in I, August. I, I have I, never I, heard I, that I, before. Yeah. Please tell me more. Tell we'll, me more. <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, be, so if, we'll be, if you guys if you guys have a discerning eye. We don't. We we were talking too, but the, we're not getting the great red spot just because of the rotational synchronicities. But if you look right around here, that's great red spot, Junior. Now, I oh, see right a mouse. Red spot, I see a mouse yeah. point. Uh, I'll move. I'll move. Red. Look in that general vicinity there. It's it's in that that area there. Yeah. Every once in a while, you'll red see it pop out. Yes. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, so they pass each other every two years. So it's not the great red spot. It's more of like the meh red spot. Yeah. Oh, we have red spot the inferior yeah. complex one. <laughs> Oh great! And Shaw has brought this. Has brought this. Up. Oh man! Look at this. All right, here's the. I think the AR 1944. I think yeah, the big Jeez. sunspot. Is this the one that just threw a big flare at us? Yeah, yeah, that's the one. I think. It's there going go. way, way to the western side. Western Eric Beans Charlin and... said sun would be great, and six other people agreed. So Eric, there's your sun. And six other people. <laughs> You're welcome. Um. Ronald Minch asks, can Venus occult Mercury? Mercury? Is that possible? Let me think. So could I mean it technically it's possible, possible from Earth? Earth? I yeah. don't know for, I don't think they're on the same plane. No, but you, there must be some point where even if they're on different planes. It's not gonna happen often, but it'll probably happen every few thousand years, right? It's going to depend on you know, because you you have your plane there as far as you know the way everything goes, and so if they never line up with Earth, it will never see it. But at all times, you have two points they are going to line up somewhere, but maybe not from that third point. Yeah, I don't uh, believe they do. Um, Mark Ridgewell asks, "Can anyone see Mercury?" So why can we not see Mercury? I thought I thought Mercury was it's in the sky, isn't it? In the, in the daytime? Paul did last week. Yeah, Shaw, sure. would it be possible to bring up Mercury? Is that just... Yeah, give me, give me a try. Uh, give me a few minutes to see if I can. No, now, we've never had now, Shaw. <laughs> if, you can, if you can pull this off, then this will be a two yes. firsts in one episode of the Virtual Star Party. And okay, think, give, give me five minutes. And I think that would mean <laughs> we've seen all the planets. We will have seen all the planets <laughs> and yeah, Pluto. Yes, and Pluto. Yeah. yeah, that's right. Yeah. We, we oh, haven't cool. seen Mercury. Let's do it. Let's get Mercury. Oh, man. Uh, no, really pressure. Cool. no pressure, yeah. Sean. Mer- no yeah. pressure. <laughs> right. Mer- Mercury's moving into the evening sky. I haven't seen it yet, this apparition. So. That's how much to do to catch it. This, this apparition coming up is the best one for the Northern Hemisphere, too. Uh, the evening apparition coming up here in the next oh, few yeah? weeks. Yeah, for Mercury. Just yeah. the I would love to catch it in the daytime. I think Shaw's on to something here. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it should be possible. It's it's. Yeah. Uh, I've never. I've done Venus in the daytime. I've never seen Mercury in the daytime. But these sunspots. Look at the. I know. Look at that. I've seen Jupiter in the daytime too. When the, when the moon's near it, it is possible to find it. All right, Mark. So we're gonna do it for for you. For you, we dedicate Shaw's eyeballs to uh, to finding Mercury for you. <laughs> I figure if Shaw can lose one eye on this hunt. That's all I'm gonna let you go this time around, Shaw. <laughs> Um, Jamie Orlando asks, I realize that nobody can show Deep Sky tonight, but is V838 mono light echo visible in amateur telescopes? I David, don't have you... think so. No, I've, no? Never, I've never seen it. I don't know what the magnitude is on it. I was going to say, if it's in Monoceros, it should be visible right now because that's near Orion. Uh, but the moon, of course, is out right now, so you probably wouldn't want to go after anything really faint. I was looking at the, the Orion Nebula before we started here, and I could just barely see the trapezium in the core. Uh, area. I mean, the moon is that bright tonight. Yeah. I'm going to go back to David's view, which is just... Oh, man, that's great. And then James's view. There's two moons. Can someone get the whole moon? Have you got Have you got a Barlow in there, James? Or is it uh, a, like a... What's your setup? Yeah, I, I can actually go to my full uh, moon view, because it's not actually a Barlow. It's just uh, zooming in digitally. Oh, you're just on like okay. clicking on the screen and doing yes. the... The five or ten times zoom. Oh, perfect. So I'll switch in just a second. Zoom and enhance. Zoom and enhance. Wait a minute. All right, I'm gonna go back to the to David's moon. Chinese rovers in there somewhere. <laughs> I, <laughs> I zoom see in it. a little bit. What's I up, Jay right Bradley? There. How are you? Um, Allison Bondi says, please do show us Venus if you can. Done. <laughs> done and Check. done. Check. 
You're welcome. <laughs> um, Waylon Bauer asks, will a focal reducer provide better viewing of deep sky objects, or should it only be used for photography? I've never actually played with one. We've had people use a focal reducer in the past. We have. And, and yeah, they were not very now, happy actually. with it. You're, you're using one, James? No, it's Andrew. Oh, I'm Andrew. Using oh. One on the, I'm using one on the Malincam because my uh, SCT is F10. And uh, in order to get the DSOs uh, and get a reasonable size on some of them, uh, I have to reduce the focal length. So um, what I've got up now is uh, the Galaxy M64. Uh, and that's with the, a focal reducer bringing it down to f5. So it, c it can help in cases where you need to either uh, reduce, uh, sorry, <laughs> increase your field of view uh, or increase, uh, gather more photons. So it's, uh, it's the, the opposite of a barlow in, in effect. Right. Oh, very cool. Uh, Sarah Hayes asks, when is the best time of the year to look for Leo the Constellation? I'm guessing you're Leo, Sarah. So am I. And what does that say about our personality? Nothing. I think it means that we think that astrology is nonsense. I think is <laughs> what we yeah. is the personality actually, trait of Leos. Um, actually, I, I'm I'm looking right now. Leo, I see Regulus uh, way low on the horizon. What is it? 9:30 right now. So probably about 10 o'clock. It will be above the horizon. It's like a. It, you see it in the spring, right? I mean, yeah, it's, so it's pretty it's much gonna... six months off of when your birthday is. Is the best time to see it. Right. Hey, yeah, I got Mercury sorry. here. Sorry, to I mean, Do you really? Can you see the, the spot somewhere slightly oh, above oh, center? Oh, we can see it. Yes. 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 I need to screen cap this now. <laughs> oh my god. Done. Sorry, Paul. Sorry, Paul. Oh, <laughs> I'll just get show that. that. <laughs> oh That's no. Cool. Oh. This is oh, historic. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah, I'm Paul. Sure. The contrast is very low, so I can we can right. barely see it. Yeah. I hate to matter. break it to you, Paul, but Malaysia's in the house. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it does not matter. It's there. Mercury, we're looking at it, everyone. Uh, yes. Is this is going up on Twitter. <laughs> That's it. We've completed the whole set. I think Mercury is on the other side of the sun, I think. Yeah, uh, it's, 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 it's coming up in the evening sky right now. It, yeah, it, just, yeah. mm -hmm. it just passed out of uh, Soho's field of view, so it, it's like about at six, seven degrees from the sun right now. It's a little further oh, yeah. than Venus. Eric okay. Charlin says, shot, shot, shot. Agreed. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it's in retrograde right now, actually. So. No? <laughs> well, I was wondering why I was, everything was just feeling so crazy, but, but it's not, so I'm just making it up. All right. <laughs> oh, terrific. Uh, Tom Nathy says, I use a focal reducer for deep sky work on my SCT. Yeah, I mean, the trick with the focal reducer, it's the opposite of the Barlow. It it allows you to see a wider field of view, um, and so it gives you a little more room to maneuver, especially on those big, wide, you know, great big deep sky objects like California Nebula and and things like that. If you want to see a lot of view, so. Um, I'll go back to James' view of the moon. That's beautiful. Ah, there it goes. All right. Allison Bondi says, I owe you so many beers. Yes. Everyone yes, owes us all the beers. All the beers, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, Sterling Gothop asks, uh, do any of you fellow space geeks own an orrery? I've been tempted to buy one, or maybe an astrolabe, because I love old astronomy tools. be fun to mm. play with. Yeah, it would be cool. <laughs> I, I have one in the office at the school, but I just it's on it's just a trinket I have around. I don't use it's it. It's an orrery? No, an astrolabe. Oh, it's an astrolabe, yeah. So an, an orrery, if I if I recall correctly, an orrery is a model of the solar system, right? Yeah, a scale model of the solar system. Right. Just don't, don't get one that's one to one ratio. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we built one. We built one. It was a kilometer long and and to, you know, we would walk the kids to school and, and put up these these they're, images of the planets on television. They have one in DC. In Washington DC, they do have a, you know, based off the the length of, uh, excuse me, the distance between the planets, and you, it's across the mall. It's huge, and they just tell you, okay, this is where this would be if the the sun was the size of a grapefruit, and then they actually put it to scale and how far away everything is. Yeah. It really yeah, gave you that scale, that context. There's there's one in northern Maine too that is uh, the scale is one mile equals one AU. 
and Pluto at that scale from the University of Maine and Presque Isle is about 50 miles away. Yeah. They actually have Eris in the model too, which is about double Pluto's distance from it. So, kind of cool to drive. That's great. Going back to Jupiter. I got my focuser working a little bit, but I don't think the seeing is being very happy right now. I think this is one of the best Jupiters we've seen, so don't be yeah. too hard on yourself. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the color cam isn't as uh, high a frame rate as the black and white one, but uh, it's fun. But it it's is fun color. to watch in color. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I like. I know she can obviously have most people. You can see the two brown belts in the middle there, but if you look closely, in addition to the Red Spot Junior, you can see all these little uh, blue... Uh, I guess they're blue. They show blue when you process it, but they, uh, something in the equatorial bits. zone that makes them like uh, almost like streamers of banners and things like that. I don't know what they're called. No, so, Andrew, were you going to try and get Mars? Do you think it's possible? Might be. It'd be very small in my uh, focal reducer, so it'd just be a, an orange dot. Uh, I, think, I, can't, I think it's still under I'll 10 arcs. i check where it is. Okay. That would be a definite record, though. We've already got three planets under our belt in one show. Well, let's yeah. not stop for now. Four. Come on. <laughs> Momentum's a good thing. Yeah, I may try it after this uh, this galaxy and maybe um, um, see when, check where Shaw it is. Shaw on Twitter. Yeah, Shaw yes. is... I just tweeted it out. You are Shaw Gazer. S-H-A-H... G A Z E R. Yeah. <clears throat> oh, don't kick it. Let's get everybody here because we actually are. I hate to say it, we're all on Twitter too. Um, we are. <laughs> Google Plus. We talk, It depends on on the right you know the conversation. If you just want to post something really quickly, Twitter's good for it. If you want to post like nice pictures and descriptions, and we use Google Plus, we sort of move back and forth. Um, uh, David, your Astro guys with a Z. Yes. Yes. Um, Mike Phillips, what are you on Twitter? I uh, I don't have a Twitter. Account. You don't have a Twitter? What? Oh, that's what? right. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no Twitter for Mike. I should be too convinced many, into it. It's too many, yeah, too many communications. It, will, it, it can be a huge time I, suck. You don't think it would, yeah, which is 140 is. characters, but... Mm. Yeah. And I I'm have one of those F common pain. names. So I just I couldn't I couldn't make it work. Yeah. <laughs> I couldn't come up with a snazzy handle like all you guys have. And you're bald astronomer still, Scott? I am bald astronomer uh, for for the time being. I'm yeah. In the process of changing my name. Really? Yep. But all my followers will still come with me. Don't worry. Good. Good. Um, I've gone back to James View. That's crazy. <laughs> so Bill McLaughlin uh, is is watching, um, not able to image, cloudy here. Uh, speaking of orrery, I also make wooden clocks, and this has been on my list for a while. That's crazy. He makes a wooden wooden clocks. That'd be really neat. All right, done. Uh, Bill, I want to see that. And right, that's cool. that's a Festivus presence for next year. I want a wood. I want a clock. If a wooden I'm clock or a wooden orrery, or both. Cool. Yeah, both. I want it. I will actually want it in the clock. I want to watch it spin like a huge grandfather clock. Because you offered. So that's the view. Oh, Shaw's showing off the sky here, so you yeah, can yeah. see. So there's Vinny's the sun. Much nearer, yeah. They're pretty much close, nearer, though. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. They're, really yeah close. they're both really close right now. Hey, Pluto is over here. <laughs> <laughs> you feeling brave, Shaw? <laughs> yeah, if, oh, Pluto's there. <laughs> it's, it's kinda, I don't it's, think you can image Pluto during the day. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, Pluto just passed conjunction with the sun, yeah, recently, too. And, and New Horizons is, is somewhere in that field, too. Next year, New Horizons. Next year, Pluto. I know. It's going to be great. We'll finally get some new photos to use for our blog post for Pluto. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we don't have to keep recycling the same six photos. The same lumpy potato. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I cannot wait. I am totally stoked. Now, have you all participated in sending a video in to wake up Rosetta yet? No, I have not. No? Yeah. So everyone who's watching right now, Rosetta is going to be waking up on January the 20th, and it needs a little help. So if you've got some time and you want to uh, go, just do a Google search for wake up Rosetta, and you'll find the campaign, and there are accepting videos of people, creative videos of people trying to wake the, the little spacecraft up. Yeah, that's, 
that's going to be the mission to follow this year, definitely. Yeah, for sure, absolutely. Rosetta is the is the big mission of the year for for me. I, I mentioned this, like unless Curiosity finds a fossil on the surface of Mars, <laughs> that when Rosetta then when when Rosetta arrives at. 67, what are we calling it? Cherry, Cherry Gary. Cherry Gary, Harry Gary. Yeah, Cherry it's, Gary. When it rises, the... 67 Cherry Gary. And the Philae lander lands, harpoons, and lands Harp. on the surface of the uh, of the comet. We're going to see for the first time ever images on the surface of a, of, of a comet. This is brand new. We've had, you know, Eros when we had um, uh, a mission land on, on an asteroid, but we've never seen it land on a comet. So I'm I'm really excited. Yep, and next year is New Horizons at Pluto, and yeah. Dawn, Dawn spacecraft is going to arrive at Ceres. Yeah. And uh, Juno, I don't think Juno gets to Jupiter until 2016. Yeah. Um, I think so. Those, those are all coming up, too. Although, yeah. uh, with uh, AAS, we're talking about with planetary and how many, you know, we're, we're actually not going to have a lot of planetary observatories anymore. You know, we might lose Cassini and stuff like that. Yeah, they might pull a plug on it. <laughs> a great conversation we're having is that James Webb might be able to observe, like, Jupiter and Saturn in the infrared, which I didn't really think about did, it that way. Did you see it out of the AAS when they revealed the images from the Gemini planetary imager? Uh, no, down, I, uh, I wasn't streaming that part of it, so I didn't get to oh, see okay. it. Uh, well, they, they were imaging Beta Pictoris B, but they also showed a proof, proof of concept. They uh, imaged Europa with it, and they got some pretty darn good uh, nice. images considering this was a ground-based observatory. You could see detail on Europa. What? I was like, that I was pretty cool. Up. Jeff MacArthur asks, does anyone have pictures of the lander or other debris evidence left from the moon landings, or why are they not published by Hubble or other telescopes? So we get this question all the time. Hubble won't answer... find it because the Hubble cannot zoom in like that. It would be really bad on the moon, or for its uh, optics. And it just can't even. It's it's Hubble, not Hubble's it. is not powerful enough to image objects that size on the surface of the moon. But fortunately, <clears throat> the NASA LRO. Lunar Reconnaissance Orbiter has been, yeah has yeah. been orbiting uh, the moon and has returned pictures of of everything of all of the landers the footprints of the astronauts, mm -hmm. you can see the flags, you can see which flags are still standing and which I ones fell over. I love over. how you can see them falling over. Yeah, yeah <laughs> you can see the leftover uh, rovers and all of the... The, the trails. Crap, the trails, yeah. 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 So, so all of that has been imaged in, in great detail. And uh, You've you, you got to figure the base of the uh, the lunar landers that are still there are only a few meters across. They're, they're like about the size of an SUV. They're not big. Yeah, so no Earth-based telescope, even the Hubble Space Telescope can image it, but the spacecraft that are orbiting sure can and and have, and there's right. lots of great uh, I don't know if you have any of those dug up, Scott, and, I'll, and, I'll try and find some. The reason why it's difficult to see is, okay, the, the diameter of the moon is around 3,500 kilometers and we're talking about resolving something a meter wide on on something like that, it's going to be so difficult. It, the moon does look, you know, like it's, it's relatively small to us because it's so far away. But when we're talking about landing stuff on there, the moon is really big compared to us walking on it or driving something around. So it is really hard to, to resolve images, here, which I is got, why I we have the orbiter to see stuff like yeah. that. Yeah, so I'll, I'll show a picture here. Hold on. Um... We'll do it. It's happening. I think, it. I think somebody actually did the calculations as to how big of a telescope you would need to be able to resolve, to resolve that. It. It's like, I mean, yeah, like the yeah. size of the U.S. or something like that. I mean, so this is an image. This is the Apollo 17 landing site. This was the last uh, lander on the, the moon. And you can see here, like check this out. You can see, so there's the Apollo lander, right? Boom. Mm -hmm. And you can see the footprints of the uh, of the astronauts you can see the wheels of from their from their rover um, you can see some of the equipment that they left on the surface of the of the moon so yeah no I mean we've got lots of great pictures lots of evidence and it's great there's been some great pictures just recently now of like uh, curiosity crawling around on the surface of Mars thanks mm -hmm. to all of the lunar the uh, the Mars reconnaissance orbiter so you know, someone asked me, like, you know, now if we see some pictures of the Chang'e uh, rover, would that convince them? Like, no, these people no. have are unconvinced by evidence. So, at a certain point, there's no point having this conversation with them. Well, it's a conspiracy, Fraser. And now the communists are in on it with the capitalists, and you never know what's going to happen. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, you know, they're li joining the li conspiracy. Living here in Florida, I don't think people realize launches aren't secret affairs. I mean, millions of people can see. <laughs> right. <launches. laughs> 
I mean, wow. a huge thing we just shot off into space. Yeah, there's like we didn't do science for it. We just shoot stuff up in the air and wait for it to come back down. Yeah, yeah. Um, Allison Bondi asks, "Is there any possibility that Rosetta will not wake up?" Yeah, there is. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's been in deep space for two years, completely powered down. I don't know about you, but have you ever gone out and tried to start a car that hasn't been running for a couple of years? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, it's uh, it's a dangerous thing. This is the this is probably apart from the actual common encounter. This is going to be one of the most nerve wracking parts of this entire mission because because Rosetta is solar powered, and so it's got right. these great big solar panels. And they only really work close in to the sun. So for the rest of the time, as it's been catching up to the comet, it's had to follow its orbit way out into the solar system where there's a lot less light. And so now it's coming back. It's getting a lot more light on its solar panels, and it's going to be able to replenish its energy, and they're going to have enough power coming through the solar panels to be able to start it up. But, you know, I mean, it's been, it's been two years, and we haven't had anything. So, so this is with the nerve-wracking. Um... Steve Coates asks, is M1 the Crab Nebula too dim to see with the moon out? I'm not sure. Andrew, are you... Yeah. You're still on the same object. Have you... Yeah, I'm still on M64. Shall I move to something else? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That would be brilliant. Yeah, yeah, we talked about it before, so yeah, absolutely. Because uh, the moon actually going. isn't very far from the Crab Nebula because it's in Taurus right now, and Crab Nebula is in the same area, so the moon's only like five degrees away from it right now. It would be really yeah. tough, yeah. even visually, to see it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I can't see it from my backyard at the moment. Anyway, I've got a house in the way. <laughs> yeah. I'll try and bring we'll you the whirlpool instead. Tear it down. Um, <laughs> the moon actually occulted the crab a few years ago, and we were talking about whether you could actually do, uh, like for radio observatories, it would be worth trying to observe uh, occultations of the pulsar by the moon. Would be kind of neat. Um, let's go back to Jupiter before now, we lose it. Here's Paul. Paul did. Uh, he's not able to join us today. He has a lot of clouds, but he did share an image with us. Uh, let me pull this up here. Here we go. So that is Paul's son. Oh, oh awesome. You know, that's him just not being able to show up because you know, uh, the, the seeing's poor. I'm just going to show you filaments <laughs> on the sun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's just. That is awesome. Yeah, it's unacceptable, Paul. We need, you know... <laughs> Live or go home. Yeah, get your butt in here. <laughs> no. Yeah, that's amazing. I, I don't like the color, though. Yeah, you know, it doesn't have color. <laughs> I like it. Yeah. I'm going to go back to, I'm gonna go back to James' view of the moon. You know, an interesting thing about the moon today, too, I noticed that the moon is at its most northern point in the sky for 2014 today. Well, when does mini-moon happen? Mini-moon happens... Uh, it doesn't. It doesn't. There will be no, no someone moon. caught on to this mini moon conspiracy and they it's got rid of Allow me to look at this phases of the moon app. Wow, tell me <laughs> more. <laughs> so the the moon is at its at its most northern tomorrow, not today. Oh, welcome back. Here we go. So phases of the moon says. So it's like the fox is, says. Yeah. No. Exactly. Fox. <laughs> no. There's phases of the moon, and then where are we for the next full moon? Hold yeah, on. Yeah, we're, we're waxing gibbous tonight right now. There. So that's the next full moon. What's phases of the moon? Yeah. What is phases of the moon? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> and tell me where I can get this amazing product. You can get phases of the moon for free uh, on the Android, on Google Play. You can also, you, also have the iOS version, but that's yeah, all Yeah, but you know, if you are an Apple fan, you have to pay just like you everything have to else. Pay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But special love for the for the for the Android people. All right, I'm gonna go back to God. I don't even know where where to start. I'm gonna go back to Jupiter because it's just party. Oh wait, now we've got yeah. all right. There we okay. go. Well, that's a live view, and I'm uh, I stacked one while we were. I'm and I'm recording a bunch too. So I'll have a nice oh great! Image, the so people can show, see. Yeah. Would you be able to actually show a stacked image? Yeah, I think uh, oh, this one. It's a early one. It's not super great there. No, Bill. I Bill McLaughlin. I see you put a YouTube video there titled "Moon Hoax." Don't make me delete that. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm gonna have to watch it to see what you. Is what, that the? Uh, is that the one? Um, oh, it's Mitchell and Webb. It's oh, a Mitchell and Webb. Yes, yeah, I love this thing. Yeah. Okay, everyone, watch that. Please. Yeah, watch the Mitchell and Webb. Yeah. I don't think I've seen that one. Oh, it's oh, great. it's terrific. Yeah. I love Mitchell and yeah. Webb anyway. Yeah. I'm gonna go to Andrew's view. Oh no, it's still. Is that a different? Oh, that's uh, M51. It is. Yeah. Whirlpool Galaxy. Cool. Right on. That's really good. 
Yeah, I'm getting some and sky glow because of the moon, but uh, moon. Yeah, it's not too bad. Yeah. <laughs> so what are you using over there, Andrew? What What's your it's scope uh, on the camera? Okay, it's a Celestron C8. Uh, so naturally, that's uh, or natively, that's an F10 uh, Smith Cassegrain telescope. Uh, and I've got the Malincam Astro video camera on it, uh, but as I said, I've got a focal reducer on that, bringing it down to f5. So the focal length is about uh, a meter. Right. How, how fine right. a tra how fine a tracking do you need to to use that camera exactly? Is it is it pretty forgiving, or do you need pinpoint tracking on it? Yeah, the Malincam is quite sensitive. So um, this exposure, for example, is only 40 seconds. Uh, okay. So um, you, you don't need to guide until you're getting towards two minutes or three minutes. I can see it moving slightly between frames. Okay. Um, but it's pretty forgiving. Well, that's pretty good. Could though, you try so. doing a longer exposure? You're doing 40 seconds. Could you try something like try doing the two minutes, see if you get some well, I, a little bit of blur? probably blow out with the sky glow at two minutes, but I can certainly go longer uh, than this. Let me just... Yeah, exactly. try a little bit longer because it seems like it's not getting enough exposure with these so that, deep space. Oh, objects. okay. Maybe maybe on the hangout it's a little darker than I. Yeah, see it definitely. Here, so, yeah, uh, let me boost. I'm gonna up move. I'm gonna move back to David's view of the moon because. You know. I just cleaned off too, so it's actually a little clearer. Oh, did you? Did you hit it with a hairdryer? Yeah, yeah. I just went on mute and, and cleaned it off there, so it's it brightens it up quite a bit, <laughs> and it's not smearing as much as you can. Yeah. I can tell when it's getting fogged over because the contrast goes way down. Yeah, right there along the Terminator now, where there's lots of lots of craters. We got a, we got a lunar eclipse coming up in a few months too on April fifteenth that all of North America is going to see. We are gonna make a party out of that. Absolutely. Yep. That, so that, that let's might be just... that might be streamable. Actually, I think, be I think cool. we we will um, we will be all over that. That will be the virtual parties, virtual star parties. Yeah, Christmas. And, and maybe yeah. what else? I might get back in and I'll I'll hook up my. My webcam to my binoculars and get it up in the view. Sure. It's, it's not on I'll Sunday. I, I checked ahead. I was like, it'd be cool if it was on Sunday. I think it's on Tuesday or Wednesday. But it's yeah, on no, we'll week, make but... a special event of it because yeah, we'll sure. people love to see. I mean, a, a, a lunar eclipse like that, people love to see it live. Yeah, there, there are two. There are two lunar eclipses, and most of North America is going to see the October eighth one. I think yeah. the second. One it's is. been years since we've had a nice lunar eclipse. I'm, I'm look really. I love the lunar eclipse. That's like one of my favorite astro yeah. events because you can just you They're can fun. see it with your eyes. I mean, you don't need any special equipment. Right. If anything, yeah. it looks best with your eyes. Like it's just yeah. great. Yeah. There are no total solars this year. There's there's four eclipses and there's a uh, annular uh, in Australia and there is a there is a partial solar eclipse that North America is going to see in October, but no total solars. I'm going to go back to Shaw's view of Venus. Venus. Yeah, I just put out the timestamp over there just to prove that it's a live image. <laughs> <laughs> oh, great. Yeah. No, we can tell because it's jiggling around. That's how we know it's live. <laughs> yeah, so am I. <laughs> Scott is live. You are live, Scott. I'm live. Do we need and a techno dance beat here? <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see. Uh, Jeff MacArthur says there have been all kinds of UFO reports on Earth but I've never heard of any in space do you know of any? I have not heard of any um, any do, reports from space? well that means the aliens are calling it down to us say, hey yeah. you guys left them out here you know what's the <laughs> amazing thing like everyone's got these cameras now like every human being now has a you know, has a you know has a smartphone with a camera on it with HD, like with HD, with high definition, yeah, yeah. and yet the number of UFO reports are <laughs> have gone way down. Why is that? Hmm. Why is and, that? You know, yeah. we're able to identify those flying objects now. Right, <laughs> they're all identified <laughs> flying objects. No, it's because in, in it's, amateurs, amateurs that are out viewing constantly, we never seem to see UFOs. Yeah, so, exactly. yeah. yeah. So the, we're out looking well, at the you're, sky. You're right? in on it, David. You're in on <laughs> you're it. You're totally <laughs> in on it. Yeah, I, I, I get. Uh, yeah, I, uh, I'm part of Big NASA, pretty much. You right? are. Besides <laughs> I, me, but because you know, <laughs> Big NASA has so much money, they haven't been cut. Their funding has not been cut at all. It's a, it, oh. the opposite's been happening. Is NASA's been taking money from military to pay so, off the amateurs? Is this the video that you recorded, Mike, or is this live? This is this is a live view still. Here, it looks like your seeing's cleared up a bit. 
Yeah, it has a little bit. Yeah, yeah. it's a little easy to see. I got the focus there working. So and definitely helps. in the banding, that looks yeah. great. Yeah, you, both when, Jupiter and the Moon are rising, so they're getting up above the Mercury yeah. in the atmosphere. Too. When should Io pop up from the other side? Yeah, I was wondering that myself because it's, it, it's, it's after the fast. show. Is it okay? Is it? Yeah. yeah, we can't stick around. It's, I think it's about another hour and a half or so. Hmm. You guys can stick around. I might stick around. <laughs> Take still, some pictures. I'll, I might still be out. So, Andrew, is this a, the longer... Yeah, that looks a lot... Uh, you can see a lot more detail. Oh, yeah. yeah. It's closer to 50 seconds, that one. Keep going. Keep going. Let's try, <laughs> let's try a minute 30. Push it. Come on. Yeah. Let's try a minute 30, okay? <laughs> Like unless that's gonna burn out the Malin cam, I don't want to get a phone, another phone call from Rock. That'll be fine. It just might be a white screen. We'll see. I'm I'm ready for a white screen. As long as okay. it's in color, it needs to be a colored white screen. A colored then... white screen. That's all I ask. <laughs> yeah. Man. This is great. Well, uh, any other questions? That's what I'm um, yeah. Sh so Scott Chapman asks, can we pull off a view of every planet tonight? No, we nope. cannot. So we uh, Mars isn't quite up, Saturn isn't up. Pl well, Pluto's not a planet, but it, you saw it <laughs> close to the Sun, and and Uranus and Neptune are pretty close to that region too, right? The Sun's right, you know, they're in daylight right now. Yeah, I think, I think they're I, best in the fall. Yeah, I yeah. think they're they're moving in toward yeah early evening, but they're they're kind of faint. But we have seen every one. We have. Yeah. It is. Victory. Yeah, most Much of victory. them provided by Mike Phillips. He's yeah. giving us Jupiter when I think about it. I got, I got You've a done Jupiter, you tell? <laughs> Jupiter, Mars, Saturn, Uranus, Neptune, Pluto. I don't yeah. think you have. You haven't done Venus yet. Uh, yeah. See, the problem for me is that the show no, you, is always after sunset. Right. Right. Yeah, right. Like no, well after sunset. Right. On the East Coast, yeah, we're always doing this mm -hmm. like later in the evening, and Venus yeah. is already yeah. closed down. I see. I think we've done like a a pickup. VSP with Mike before, because I remember we, you and I were early days, doing it like, yeah. like a year and a half, two years ago. Yep. But I remember that. You did get Venus once, but not in the show. Not Yeah, not not in the Prime show. Yeah. Doesn't count unless it's live. I know. <laughs> yeah, live. see? <laughs> Your words to live by. Let's do this live. All right. Yeah, well, we're going to we, do... Uh, we'll we, uh, stick we around for another five minutes. Bill O'Reilly is our idol. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> do it live. Great. Any other questions? Uh, oh, no. I have uh, I have Tico Crater in the center there. I right think now, that so. I think we we're definitely starting to see the the trailing, but I think that looks better. What do you think, Scott? I uh, it does it. I mean, yeah. it's starting to get blown up from the from the moon a little bit, and it little trails, but oh, I'm 51. Cool. Yeah, but it looks much better. So, Alison Bonnie, thank you for answering my last question so clearly. This is my last question. I swear, would you recommend a telescope or binoculars as a beginner for hobby purposes? I usually work with microscopes and like to get a more macro view. Binoculars. Uh, binoculars. Binoculars, yeah. So <laughs> so we're all going to recommend that. So binoculars, specifically those. Hold on, Scott. Right, right there. here. I, you know, Celestron, I, Sky the, Master. These are uh, 20 by... You know, I think they're 25 by 70. 25 by 70, yeah. I think those you know, are... You, even with a telescope, I still use binoculars yeah. most of the you, time. You'll keep using them. For, yeah, they're like yeah. you know they they're on sale. Sometimes fifty bucks on yeah, Amazon. Yeah, I got I got those for sixty bucks on Amazon. Yeah, and they're great. They're fantastic. Yeah, they're so portable. just watch Amazon. Get a pair of them. Some something in that scale. Like you want that twenty five. You can go down to a fifteen, but you're really gonna want the twenty five. Like get some don't, light buckets, and you'll be really happy with it. Don't they're heavy though. Don't use a pair of image stabilized binoculars because you won't want to use anything else after. Yeah, whatever <laughs> you do, yeah, do not that, try image stabilizing binoculars. And if you can afford them off the bat, right. you know, not wanting to make the investment in a telescope and you're buying image stabilizing binoculars, don't talk to me. Yeah, I, just, just I have I have a pair. I have a pair. They're awesome. Yeah, stop talking. They're to me. unbelievable. Yeah, I've had a chance <laughs> to try three pairs of them now, and they're literally, amazing. you know, I didn't never want to take them off my eyes. They're the right. they're the best. Yeah. I feel yeah. when I go to normal binoculars, I'm like, really? There's no button on these? <laughs> Why is it all jiggling around? <laughs> like, What's going on? <laughs> Fraser, you reminded me of this uh, game show I think I've seen on the, some of the Japanese stations or whatever. It's binocular soccer.
Have you seen that one? No. You might want to take them off for some things. <laughs> some people try binoculars. to play soccer with binoculars yes. on. Yeah, I think they're on backwards <laughs> to make everything look far away. But yeah, I mean, Japanese they come up with all sorts of cool. Oh, elements. that's awesome. amazing. Yeah, that's binoculars great. soccer. Cool. Oh, I love it. All right. All right. Well, it's uh, six fifty-seven. Wrapping this up. Let's wrap this up. So, I'm gonna sort of say goodbye to everybody. So uh, first, I'm gonna start with Shaw. His last view of Venus. Oh, there he is. Hey, Shaw. So, again, thank you so much for, for all of your hard work. You have been uh, really pushing the limits of this uh, of this hobby, and I uh, really appreciate star. it. Yeah. yeah Total yeah, rock star. Yeah. Thank you so much. It's and great. I can't wait to see uh, yeah, what's awesome. going to happen over the next couple of, uh, next couple of weeks as, you, as, you, as Venus pulls away from the sun. So. Yeah. And, then, and then I look forward to that animation. Yeah. Will do. <laughs> no Andrew, pressure. Yeah, but remember, it's okay to say no to Fraser. Yeah, you need to learn that. You need to tell yeah. him no. Yeah, it's okay to say no to me as long as you are uh, clear about this. Because otherwise, I'll just keep asking for stuff for the fans. Yeah. Um, Andrew, thanks for thanks for getting up so early. You can go back. You're to welcome. <laughs> yeah, I'll, I'm just got a, another twenty seconds to okay. run All right. on. Okay. I'll come back. Uh, M64, uh, yeah. and then I'll quickly move to Mars just so you can say you got it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that'd be great. It'll be yeah. overexposed, and, and you won't be able to see anything but an orange blob, but uh, yeah. we'll get it. <laughs> yeah, no, that's but it's great. in color, so it's all right. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Dave Dickinson, thanks as always. Yeah, and, yeah, uh, it's been great. And you have named the mini moon, so as long as everyone's really clear. Yeah, um, tomorrow, I, I'm, I'm pretty sure I'll have the article out tomorrow on this week's Mini Moon on University Day. That sounds great. Nice. Awesome. All right. And James, thanks for popping in at the last minute. Hold on, where is he? He's down in the bottom with the moon. There, is oh, that working? Good. Is he gone? He's, I think he's muted. Oh, well. All well, right. thanks, James. Thanks, James. <laughs> I'll hey, make it um, so I can plus mention you, because I tried to reply, and I couldn't. So make it so I can plus message you on Google Plus. Yeah, uh, and Mike Phillips. And if you haven't seen already, Mike's got. If you check out Mike's feed, uh, he's got a really cool animation that he's working on of Jupiter and the moons, and it's great because it, it looks just so three D. You can see the the moon passing in front of passing in front of Jupiter. So I know you're you're gonna keep on working on that. Yeah, we, yeah. We, that we, one was fun because it had the the moon's moving, and uh, I am working on a full full rotation. Hopefully, I got enough data close enough it. next to each other. So. We, need to, we need to catch an impact during the virtual star party. That would be, that would be cool. awesome. Oh, really? Is that what we're gonna add now? Okay. Oh, Andrew's got. Uh, <laughs> oh, hold on. Andrew's got Mars. It's Mars. Right on. Hey. hey. That's Very it. Red. So we, we had all the terrestrial planets besides Earth. And Jupiter. And Saturn. Not today. Not today. No, we have Mercury, Venus, Mars, yeah. and Jupiter. That's awesome. Shaw could probably get Saturn, let me think. No, you should not. You know, like, uh, we have Wait. Messier marathons. We should make a virtual star party well, marathon where in, we get I, all the planets. And actually, we're going to do, we're gonna do a Messier marathon. We're going to do it in March. We're going to yeah. do okay. That's the plan, I think, is we're going to try and get all of the, the objects in one hour. In an hour, wow. Well, we've got multiple people, yeah. right? So we've got some people right. in the West Coast, people in the East Coast, people in in Europe. I think we can, I think we can pull this off. Maybe a couple of hours. We'll yeah. see. That'd be fun. Yeah. Yeah. Now, David, real quick, can you get a picture of the ground real quick so we can have the, <laughs> all five, the first five planets <laughs> yeah. in yeah. the VSP? Point your, yeah, point your screen down at the ground, and then there we go. There. Another oh, planet. Yay. There's the ground. There's my propane, <laughs> there's my propane heater on the ground. <laughs> Perfect. That's awesome. Good, good point, Scott. <laughs> cool. And James, uh, you dropped out, but now you're you're back. So now I'm going to say goodbye. Yes, sir. Uh, sorry about that. My internet connection for some reason is dying on me. What? But, you uh, you can't get internet out there in the middle of wherever it is you are. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. No, just kill it right back. <laughs> kill it right back. You always have to kill it right back. Yeah. yeah awesome. All right, and Scott, as always, thanks a lot. What's coming up? Uh, let's see. Tomorrow, it just we just got the notification for it. It's a our newest Hubble Hangout is tomorrow at noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. I have not gone over the details of what the Hangout's on yet, but it is a citizen science project with the Hubble Space Telescope people. And so. at the same time is Astronomy Cast. Boom! We're bumping you out. Uh -oh. I did. I did. I actually. Oh, it is on. Is this I where we're going to go happening? further because I might not be in it because All I'm right. waiting for Time Warner Cable. 
<laughs> yeah, so we're, we're going to be doing uh, Astronomy Cast tomorrow at noon Pacific. We got a live uh, episode with me and Dr. Pamela Gay. We're going to be doing uh, Arthur C. Clarke. Nice. Yeah, which would be cool. Love so. it. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that it wraps up wraps up our hour. So thanks everyone for joining us. Thanks to the team for bringing the planets. I thought I, I didn't expect it was going to come together so this, nicely. Yeah, I, mean, I was worried. We're getting all like, I oh, I got crap weather. I got, like, great. I got a lot of wind. Yeah. Like, we just like we took all of our good seeing for the year last week. I'm like, we're not going to have anything. Ever. <laughs> right. We used it all up. <laughs> but this was great, and we yeah. we broke a few milestones. I'm I'm really excited. So th- so thanks everyone for watching. And uh, and thanks for all the astronomers for participating. Really appreciate it. And we will see you all next week. Hey, Fraser, watch our show. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That's a good right.